A few months ago, while on a morning walk with my dog Luna, I found these beautiful red rocks on the ground. The deciding factor that led me to think that they could be turned into pigment was the fact that I was able to draw on the ground with them, leaving behind a red chalk-like color. Though not shown, it is important to note that I'm wearing safety goggles and a respirator mask to protect my lungs from dust and particles that can be inhaled. If you don't have a mortar and pestle, a hammer will do. Just make sure to shield yourself from flying pieces. If you're new here, my name is Lizzie. I enjoy documenting my handmade life on topics relating to herbalism, permaculture, gardening, and the organic arts. The next step was to levigate the powder. By adding water and shaking up the jar, it allows the powder to disperse into the water with the heaviest sediment sinking to the bottom while the finest powder floats to the top. If you watched my last video about making my own watercolors, I learned to make a natural binder medium from tree gum, honey, and vegetable glycerin to mix with the beautiful turquoise pigment I had purchased. Now hooked with the process of making my own watercolors, the idea of making my own pigment also intrigued me. The finest particles are what we are looking for. So after the water settles for a few seconds, I pour out the liquid trying my best not to get any leftover sediment. I learned that you can levigate several times, but each jar gets more and more diluted. Similar to how olive pressings are done to get olive oil, the first pressing is the richest and purest, while the third and the last pressing is used to make the famous dark green bar of Castile soap. Pressing three times ensures that every last bit of the olive is put to use. All this to say that the best pigment will be in jar one. Step three is patience. I set the jars to the side by a sunny window and let the water evaporate out. To speed up the process, some people pour the liquid out into a coffee filter to dry out faster. I just placed my jar out in my patio and the sun evaporated out all the liquid. What's left is this fine pigment that can now be further sifted and turned into my very own watercolor. Processing your own pigment can be so fun knowing that the forged rocks and minerals you find can become part of your very own palette. The earth is vibrant with color. Color shows up as chlorophyll in plants, melanin in our skin, carminic acid in cochineal bugs, and pigment in mineral rocks and clays. Pigments are all around us thanks to the wavelengths of the sun and the light it reflects. Once crushed, washed, and sifted, earth and mineral pigments are hand molded with a natural homemade binder. In my last video, I went over how to make the binder medium that is added to pigment to allow the color to transfer and hold onto paper. Without a binder, the pigment would just fall off the page. Molding the paint several times allows for any large chunks to be broken down making the finest paint possible. This process usually takes a while and should not be overlooked in order to have refined watercolor paint.
Depending on the workability of the paint, more water can be added to loosen up the medium, but I find that it will just take longer to dry and more cracking can occur, so I try my best to move the tempered glass molar along with a bit of resistance. As you can see from my watercolor journal, which I hand stitched myself, I'm testing out the smoothness of my forage color in comparison to other purchased pigments. a question early on when learning to process my own pigment that was along the lines of can't you just make watercolors out of rocks without refining them the answer is yes but the resulting color is not as pigmented and seems to have a rougher texture so yes it is important to process pigment if wanting a high quality watercolor This entire process has taught me so much about the world of color, and many thoughts have been had. The earliest evidence of color and pigment in cave drawings dates back to at least half a million years ago, with the use of red ochre in Africa. The Stone Age had its own color palette with red and orange hues. It's incredible to think who the first people were to create tangible colors. I hope this video has inspired you to start searching for color in your everyday life, and if you are as eager to build your own color palette as I am, then you are in the right place. Join me in my little corner of the internet.